We've got a sagging problem. Not just there, but here, the glove box. Let me tell you, they're both ugly. Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in Brighton Beach call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and I'm here today to talk about a sagging problem. Actually, a couple. Now, some are more easily solved than others. However, the main problem today is the sagging glove box on the Z3, an infamous problem, at least here in the United States, because it's an apparently uniquely American problem. And I'll talk about why, and I'll show you how to solve it. But first, our Z of the week. This week we're back on the west side of Cleveland, apparently the Z capital of the world for Rob's 2001 three liter five speed manual Roadster. Originally a Las Vegas car, Rob's completely redone the cooling system and put on some matte black racing stripes to cover over some paint damage. Rob says he loves his Z, uses it only on good weather days, which we laughed about because they're hard to come by in Cleveland, loves the sound of it even with the top up and looks forward to maybe repainting the whole thing someday soon. Thank you so much, Rob, for sending in your beautiful car. If you'd like your car featured on Moment of Zed, please follow the instructions in the description, send me an email, and we will get it on very, very soon. Now, on to that glove box. Simple tools to use, a medium Phillips head, a very, very small flat screwdriver, a light, and the replacement bracket that is going to reinforce our glove box, link in the description, that's from Amazon. Step one, empty the glove box. By the way, this project is going to go sideways on me and I'm gonna have a few what not to do's to show you here momentarily. But first, the root of the problem, inside the actual glove box door, if you unscrewed these screws, and there's two on the other side, you would find a plate built into the glove box door, which is meant as crash protection for an unbelted passenger so they won't uh, go up and under the dash, get hit in the head with the airbag and die from a broken neck. This was apparently just a problem in the United States and not in other parts of the world where I guess people knew enough to wear their seat belts and that causes our sagging. Next step. Remove the plastic covers from the screws, and I'm going to link you to a different way to do this in the description, because the way I did it didn't work out that well, and uh, I wouldn't do it this way again. But once you get those covers off, undo those two screws between the center console and the glove box enclosure. Next, way up under the dash, there is a black trim panel that is held on by trim panel retaining clips. There are three of them that I'm pointing out right now. And those clips are very simple. You just turn them 90 degrees and then they will slide out. Now on that trim panel itself, there's two small hooks, one on the left side and I'm pointing out here that hooks into the glove box enclosure right in that hole there. And you need to be careful of that when you're lowering it, that it doesn't stick. There is also another one in the center of this trim panel that hooks also to another part of the glove box enclosure. Next to remove the glove box enclosure, you have four main screws. I may or may not have forgotten to film this when I was actually removing them, but here are the holes. Two near the center, one on either side, and that's mostly what is holding up your glove box and glove box enclosure. Once you've loosened those, you need to have something holding up your glove box, otherwise it's gonna fall. And when it falls, it would break possibly this seam here behind the center console that glove box enclosure is hooked in. As you can see in this scene, I've propped it up with a piece of wood and I'm getting ready to remove it. You can see obviously there's a big gap between it and the rest of the dash. Uh, and I'm ready to take it out, which is going to be kind of tough to remove it. Now, I've already removed it. I couldn't film it, unfortunately. You're supposed to pull it slightly forward, twist it down with the left side down first, peel back the center console, and then remove it without breaking anything. It tends to hit on the left-hand side where I just pointed out. It also tends to jam 
on the ducting, well, also on these two tabs, one of which I've broken, unfortunately, when I removed it, and also the duct that goes to this vent kind of holds you up. It's very, very difficult to do. I don't think if I were to do this again, I would do it without removing the center console. That would make it easier. As you can see, I've broken a piece of the duct off, as well as those tabs. Now, I think both these things are repairable, and I'm going to have to do that before I put it back together. So that's where it went a little sideways on me. I wouldn't do it again without removing the center console. Uh, the next thing, there's a weak bracket that BMW uses, and the reinforcement that I got off of Amazon is meant to sit on top of that. And using the original clips, uh, we basically just clip one bracket to the other, the silver new one to the black old one, and that is supposed to reinforce it and eliminate our uh, sag. To do that, you need to remove these four screws that I'm showing you now. Once those are out, the bracket can be removed. And you can see where the glove box straps are held in by this bracket as well. And to put the new bracket on, put it on top of the old one. Go ahead and reuse those clips. Be careful because they tend to be a little sharp. And again, just putting those on very quickly. And as you can see, this is what it'll look like when you're done. And that new stainless steel bracket is much, much stronger than the old mild steel one. Then go ahead and reinstall the bracket on the glove box door. Make sure the tabs for those straps are back in place and just go ahead and set it on top. I double checked and made sure that the glove box still latched, which it did. And basically you just need to line up those holes and go ahead and put the original four screws back in them. And that's what it will look like when you're done with the box latched and ready to go. Hey folks, unfortunately that's going to be a wrap for this week. I wanted to finish this all in one day, but it's not going to happen. We're going to have to fix a couple things. And again, it's this brittle 20 year old plastic. We're going to have to, uh, I'm going to try and fix this duct, although it's not critical for me here in Florida. I'd still like to fix it. That may be difficult. Uh, but the main thing I have to do is fix these two tabs. These are two of the points where this connects to the rest of the car. So it's kind of critical. There's only a few screws that actually hold this thing in. Uh, so we'll wrap that up as part of part two next week. So stay tuned for that. A uh, few lessons learned on this project. Number one, I would probably sacrifice those little beige covers for the Phillips head screws because they're really difficult to remove. It's time consuming and you're going to end up scratching up the dash and you're going to end up scratching and tearing those things anyways. Shut up, Mark. Please follow the link in the description for a better way to remove those caps. Beyond that, you have to be really, really careful when you remove this glove box if you're not going to remove the center console. And now removing the center console is a whole nother job that's pretty involved. And that's why I didn't do it. If it were simple, I would have done it and this would have came out nice and easy without any breakage. But it is what it is. So we're going to work on that for next week. Please come back next week for part two. If you found this content valuable, please hit like. Thanks for watching. And until next time, drive safe.